all right, so hearing, what are we, what is the stimulus? What are we sensing? Is actually air pressure. And this air pressure is called sound waves. We are able to sense that ultimately in our inner ear, but there are structures in our outer ear that help to bring in that sound, funnel it to a drum, your eardrum or tympanic membrane. There are structures in the middle ear that help to amplify that sound, make it stronger. And then the inner ear is where these pressure waves are, are going to be in liquid. So now that it is um, pressure, but in liquid. And this in the inner ear is where this pressure is converted to a change in membrane potential. What is this called? Sensory transduction. In the ear, this occurs in special cells, special sensory cells called hair cells. All right, so that's what hearing is. The and along the way, there are specific anatomical structures that help to optimize this. The first one being this thing right here, the pinna. The pinna acts to funnel and collect sound from the environment. Humans have you know, our pinna are fine. They seem to work, um, but, but look at these. This is a great example of structure function. So these different bats likely have different um, sounds that they need to hear. Echolocation, you probably know is important for bats to, to tell where they are, um, echolocate. And it's likely that you could look into this for extra credit. These different structures are related to the different frequencies or types of sound or where these bats live or something. I don't know, but how cool are these pinna um, really emphasizes that these bats need to be able to collect sound very well. Here are some more pinna, oops, that are pretty cute. And the naked mole rat, I'm sorry, this is not the naked mole rat, this is just a, a, a mole, but they do not hear very well. And it's partly because they don't have a pinna, they have other structures, but um, they don't need to hear as well. And the pinna has not, is not there. Okay, so that is the first structure of our ear to talk about. So this here is the outer ear. This is our pinna. Direct sound waves collects them into the ear into the ear canal specifically. So that's what this is, a giant tube that's going to send sound waves, pressure waves to the eardrum, which is called the tympanic membrane. This is the membrane that doctors look at when they check your, for ear infection. Um, it's the only thing that you can't see inside past that, but it gets red and inflamed. Um, during the ear infection. And that's because there's fluid built when fluid builds up in the middle and inner ear. So here is the middle ear and here is the inner ear. So inner ear infections are something you've typically heard of middle or inner ear versus an outer ear infection would just be the canal where the canal gets red. Um, so these here, the tympanic membrane is literally a drum like it vibrates when pressure hits it. So it's, vi it's gonna vibrate just like a drum head and it's going to cause movement of these three bones, which are the, the malus, incus and stapes. This is, um, these names refer to their structures um, that are set up to be like A, a hammer and structures that amplify the sound. So really cool example of structure function. The key thing about um, these, these bones that I wanna emphasize is that the surface area right here of the stapes, this is actually part of the stapes right here, is large. So you're going from a small surface area to large and that's amplifying the sound, this vibration of these bones. Um, these bones are going to hit onto the oval window. That's what's right here. 
the oval window is the opening to the um, cochlea. So vestibular apparatus is up here. That's for balance. I included, kept the pictures of that just so you kind of are aware that that's where your sense of equilibrium from your vestibular system comes from. So this is your vestibular system. Um, we are going, are focusing on this part right here, which is the cochlea, this snail-like structure. We have hit it with the opening to it, with the oval window. When we hit that oval window with the stapes, that results in pressure in the cochlea. This, the cochlea is filled with fluid. So we now have, what we said in that first picture, pressure in the inner ear that is moving in fluid. So the oval window is also this round window, which is, I might mention in the future, it's, it's um, important window for dissipating the pressure, like at the end of, so we don't have just pressure build up. The oval window and the round window separate the fluid filled inner ear from the air filled middle ear. We don't want fluid to build up in your middle ear. If it does, um, it hopefully drains out. This is the eustachian tube here. A lot of kids have a eustachian tube that is too small for their heads. <laughs> it's a kind of an oversimplified summary of what it is. So they do not have enough drainage and, or, or when you get sick, even an adult gets sick, gets congested, the tube blocks up and causes fluid buildup in the middle ear, causes an ear infection. So where we are now is pressure waves in the cochlea. We are going to need to transduce that to a neural signal, of course. So there's anatomy here that's fairly complex. I'm not gonna go through tons of detail of, of it. I want you to know, so here's our cochlea, that there's fluid in the cochlea, you already know that. And when that pressure, right, there's pressure, which is now moving in the fluid, sound waves caused by sound waves. Um, it's going to cause physical distortion of this tectoral membrane. This is going to move. Right, so the membranes in this cochlea are flexible. They're going to move. And when that happens, this is really the meat down here. Here's that tectoral membrane. When that moves because of the pressure, it's going to um, cause these hair cells to move. So what kind of cells are these hair cells? They're gonna be mechanoreceptors. They're gonna open, or, um, channels are going to open in response to movement. Let's see what that looks like here. So here we're zooming in to a single hair cell, just like, looks a lot like a taste receptor cell, actually. We've got a separate cell here. So this is the sensory neuron that goes to the brain. So two separate cells. When that pressure wave comes by, it's going to cause these little hairs, which are called stereocilia, these, that's why they're called hair cells though, they look like hairs, um, to bend, right? Literally just a mechanical, push them over. Stereocilia bend, this is going to open potassium channels. So these are mechanically gated potassium channels. Calcium is gonna flow into the cell in this case. So these cells are slightly um, more negative. So calcium, potassium, potassium is gonna flow into the cells. Um, it's very high in concentration outside the cell, which it usually is, is not. This is a special thing about endolymph, the fluid in the cochlea, has high potassium, it's gonna flow in and cause what? Depolarization of this hair cell. What's happening here? Calcium dependent vesicle release. 
calcium influx causes vesicle stuff to use with the postsynaptic membrane. Um, neurotransmitter, probably glutamate, is released, causing a signal in the sensory neuron. Okay, so now this is our sensory neuron. We need to get that to the brain. 